point. He looked at it down here. Alright, so I guess we're almost about ready to go. <coughs> Good evening, and welcome to the 126th meeting of the New York Linux Users Group. I would uh, like to thank our sponsors, IBM for meeting space, and Mike Goyke, Mike here. was here. I think I saw him over there. Yeah, back here. Mike, yeah. oh, there he is. <laughs> Mike Hampton coming in for this. Pablo Dubo and Henry Chin. Henry was here for, I think, about four years. That's probably the longest anyone has come to every single meeting we've ever had. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to thank Jim Gleason, Peter Norton, Tony Murchisano, Jeff Cole, Jack Pupil, Larry Duffy, Mark Alego, David Bristow, Ron Meadows, Chris Nadel, and Brian Gupta. Brian, here? No? Um, Brian. He's here. Uh, I guess uh, everybody probably is aware of our mailing list, which you can get on them at mailout.org slash mlist. We have an announcements list. She's very well by a technical discussion list, a volunteering list, and a Python workshop list. Uh, we also have a very active IRC channel on Freenode at Town at, uh, Island. Uh, all of the mailing lists have RSS feeds, and the uh, IRC channel has a link off our homepage. Uh, do, does anyone have any announcements? Uh, yeah, Dave asked me yesterday about the uh, big perfect
And as they say, the rest is history. But afterwards, afterwards, uh, Rockbox has been ported to uh, many more targets besides just the player. Um, for example, one of the uh, first targets was the Arcos Recorder. V1, can anyone see? Yes. And um, along with that were the uh, Jukebox Recorder V2 and Jukebox um, FM Recorder as well as the Arcos Audio FM and SP, which uh, we don't have, unfortunately, because they're quite hard targets to get a hold of. Oh, SP. Um, the difference between these two is um, this one's got an FM radio and recording, while this one does not. Oh, wow. Yeah. In um, 2004, Rockbox um, was ported to the iRiver H100, which was the first time a target could play more than just MP3, as was the case with the Arcos players due to hardware limitation, as um, these had relatively weak main CPUs and were offset with MPEG decoding hardware. Thus, Rockbox can only play MP3s as part of the hardware. And iRiver, on the other hand, has a much more powerful CPU. It's based off of a cold fire CPU. And thus, we were able to put uh, more codecs, including Octorbis and uh, I believe what were some of the other ones, like Black. Yeah. Some very like some of the very early ones were like on Warbus and Flack. Um, we didn't actually even have WMA, even though the original firmware could. Uh, WMA came along a little bit later, but uh, leaving anything off. Uh, since the iRiver H100, Rockbox has been ported to a humongous variety of targets, all thanks to the talents of many hardware hackers and programmers, which we owe a million to, I guess. Um, so what Rockbox, anyway, what it is. Uh, Rockbox, in general, is a free, GPL firmware replacement for various digital audio players. Um, it adds many, many new features and options that a lot of factory firmwares do not include normally. Um, it plays free music, uh, music formats including Odd Vorbis, Flat, uh, MusePack, and some others. It retrofits features into some other folder players, like um, it will give certain targets uh, the ability to play back uh, MP1 and 2 video files. Um, it does actually turn your uh, audio player into a USB human interface device, which means that you can actually use it to do um, con you know, control like a media player or a presentation on your computer as a small keyboard. Yes, I mentioned it's also GPL. Uh, what Rockbox isn't, and this is going to be the big one, Rockbox is not Linux. Rockbox is its own, um, it's, its own kernel, its own memory system, uh, we are POSIX compliant, but that's about as far as we go. It's not a firmware enhancement. It basically, you don't, you don't install Rockbox on top of the factory firmware and think it's going to enhance that. It will replace the firmware. It's a standalone firmware replacement. So, you know, it is basically, we put it mildly, it's a whole different ball of wax. Um, it's that way of pirating music. We actually, one thing we will never do is we will never implement things like DRM, ever, because most of us basically hate DRM. And this basically is not a magic wand that you can just wave over any audio player and think that you're going to get Rockbox on it right away. Um, Rockbox is ported to players, and it usually takes some time and effort to get it done. So people will usually come to us and say, oh, can I, I have this unsupported player. Can I install Rockbox on it? And we got to tell them, sorry, no. People have to port to it first. And this is not your typical. Uh, this is not your typical old firmware that most you know most uh, people just buy the MP3 player from the store and then take it home and use it just like that you know unless he's a developer. <laughs> yeah. I guess you should mention we have a few guys that are fathers that you that are developers on Rockbox, and kudos to all of them for having you know. So what are these two players? Oh, these are the Arcos Jukebox Recorder and the Arcos Jukebox um, 6000, which I have. Also known as the studio. Yeah, also known as the studio. Later revisions, which are these two right here. Um, the supported platforms that Rockbox runs on, um, like I said, the Arcos Jukebox um, 5000 and 6000, the studios, uh, the recorder V1, V2, and FM recorder, and the audio FM and SP. Um, on the Apple side of things, it runs on the first generation iPod to the fifth generation, including the 5.5 video, uh, the first generation Nano, and the first and second Mini. Uh, it does not run on any uh, newer iPods at the current moment. Um, runs on the iRiver H100, the H300, and the H10 series, which are 100, 300, and H10. And it runs on the Koan i Audio X5, M5, and M3, including the L varieties of all three targets. 
And you see on the left is a colon M3, the colon M5, and the colon X5. It runs on the SAMHSA E200, E200R, and the C200. Um, only original hardware revision still currently. It runs on the, uh, the Toshiba Gigabit F and X, and it also runs on the Olympus M100. And these are all of our supported targets. Um, we also have a couple of um, nearly their targets. <coughs> Sorry, I couldn't get patients for all of them, but um, one of the, some of the com uh, currently nearly supported targets are the Toshiba DVD S series, which is on the left, uh, the Koan uh, D2, which I have over here. Um, I would have said the iAudio 7, but um, we're not really that great with it right now. It still needs some more work. The uh, Sandus, Sansa uh, E200 V2, the C200 V2, the M200 V4, the Sansa Fuse and the Sansa Clip are known as the AMS models because of the uh, CPU that's used in them, created by a company called Austria Microsystems, AMS. Um, the Olympus M500i, which is uh, listed over here. The uh, Philips Gear SA9200, HD 1630, and 6330. The um, Samsung um, YEP series, the YH820 and 925, and the Onda VH747 and 7, sorry, 47 Plus are um, two Chinese um, MP3 players. They're the, kind of kind of, they're the kinds that you should pass off as like iPhone clones or iPod Touch clones. Um, they run on the mid state CPU. We have some code running on those. Those are kind of hard to get, slightly more obscure targets. But anyway, moving on. And we have the Nightfly Air targets, which um, these targets have code in SVM, but they're in various states of completeness, meaning that some have very basic functionality and probably less, best left for the developers to work on right now. But we have the um, Creative Zen Vision M, the iPod Nano second generation, which broke tremendous news actually because this was one of the targets that we never thought we would be able to get any kind of code running on, and some kind of folks at the uh, Linux for Nano development project actually managed to break the uh, boot loader. Nice. Uh, yeah, nice. It works on the Classic as well, yes, that's true. And we have some basic code in SVN that will do a Rockbox boot loader, but it doesn't really go very much further than that. Yep, you got to get a pretty picture of that. Um, the Mizu M3, M6 SL, and M6 SP music cards all have very basic functionality. Um, a few more Samsung targets as well, the C100, the M200, uh, newer fuses, so those V2, the V2, and the Samsung View. Uh, the Arcos AV300 is another not quite good target. Another very obscure target is the Titan Alio TPJ1022, which is, uh, I think it's a French player, some uh, French company that made that, I'm not yeah. sure. I've never seen one of these myself, but it's a really obscure target. We have very basic functionality for it. Um, the Logic DAX is another one. And one I revert, the IFP790, a little flash-based target. looks kind of like a USB stick. And the Samsung uh, YUP YH920 series has um, S control, I believe, and video, but it doesn't have audio, right? I think, yeah, I think it's um, as far as I got with it. Exactly what is that? Which one is which one? Oh, the Olympus MR I have over here. Is that an I or not? No, this is an um, MR100. That's one of our supported targets. Fully supported. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, for you know, an example, this is uh, nano second gen, not quite their target. We have a couple of other not quite their targets, like the Arcos AV300 is a not quite their target. So these are targets that are just sitting in SVN, various states of completeness, like I said. Which mean? Oh, that is a support target. Oh, well, it's a support target. Um, but for example, the Zen Vision M has a very uh, has a very funky install method. It's, I think it basically means like pull out the hard drive, format it, um, put the Rockbox build on it. Uh, I, I don't remember how the whole thing goes. It was really convoluted. Uh, the Mizu M3, um, I know has display, but we don't really read. The, we can't really read the NAND flash on it. But we got some kind of audio, even though it means like throw a wave file into the bootloader, you get like all of two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like yeah, like I said, the two seconds like, are rock box. Actually, somebody <laughs> took like two <laughs> seconds of a song and played it. <laughs> but like I said, the most of these are like in various points of completeness. So we're you know whoever like whoever's interested, like any interested developers want to come along, download a source code, and just like go nuts with these. Go ahead if you have any targets. 
We are always looking for volunteers to help us, you know, help finish off targets. Anybody who ever wants to come in and contribute code. And uh, here we go. We're going to do a rundown of some of the features that Rockbox has. Um, one of the big draws that a lot of people love about Rockbox is that it plays a wide variety of um, codecs, including, of course, um, MP1, 2, and 3 audio, always important, Agorbis, um, Black, um, 8 files, Monkey's audio, but 8 only plays at um, version 3.97 or higher. It doesn't play any lower than that. Um, it plays MusePack, I believe, up to SV7, I believe it's so. Yeah, I think it does. It play, yeah, no, MusePack plays up to SV7. Um, it plays AEC audio, like what iTunes would normally rip to, by default. Not, not DRM. No, not DRM. That's the only one thing. It plays AEC, but it will not play DRM or AEC. So you can buy music off of iTunes, which is DRM free, but if you have any music that had DRM on it, it ain't happening. Sorry. Um, it plays uh, DVD audio, AC3 audio, AC852. It plays um, Apple Gallic files, um, Apple Losses files. Uh, it plays Shorten, whoever remembers Shorten. It plays Speaks. And as a side note with Speaks, um, Speaks is also used for the uh, voice function in Rockbox, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more when we get to that. It plays um, WavePack, I believe, um, Lossless and Lossy hybrids. No, we did play WMA. Oh, I didn't list WMA. I list WMA. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't use WMA. There's actually uh, a number of other products that probably aren't on there. Yeah. Um, we do play WAVE files, a um, Apple AIFF files. Um, chip like tunes. AU. Um, no, no AU. No AU. No AU. Not yet, unless somebody wants to write it on the code for it. <coughs> chip tunes. NES sound file. <laughs> Super NES sound yeah, files. Commodore 64 SID files, um, Atari 8 bit music files, mod tracker files. Yep, but only mods. It does not play IT or XM or STM without a patch. We have a patch in our tracker. Yeah, there is a patch in the tracker to add more mod trackers, but we only just play regular mod. Um, recently, real media audio, real media containers, which contain Cook and A track as well as DVD audio, AC3, and we also have MIDI playback via a plugin and a patch set. Sound fonts? Hmm? Sound fonts for MIDI? Um, we have a patch set actually you can download from our website. Okay. Sample patch set. Yeah. Can break it on and rush. Yeah. I, I think like it's MIDI uh, sample packs will actually work too, right? Um, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I've never tried it to MIDI, I just think it's bought one. Uh, Rockbox is also capable of playing back MP1 and MP2 video files with MP3 audio on all software coded targets. And basically, anything that is not Arcos is a software coded target. Make it easy. Well, the AV340 is a hybrid. And I know that's a hybrid, as they are saying. And um, on the bottom are some screenshots of the Rockbox interface. Um, this is a um, Rockbox on the Sansa clip showing off the FM radio. Uh, this is the sound settings on a Sansa V200. And over there, it's just the general settings on all three scale targets, like the iPod um, fourth generation, the iRiver H100, the um, iAudio M5, and a few others. Uh, some more functionalities, like I mentioned before. Um, USB HID functionality. You can use your DAP as a remote for your music player, for your open office presentations, or whatever you wish. How um, exactly do you do that? All right, well, you plug in the player via USB, and most of them OS will pick it up as a small keyboard, and you can use the buttons. HID. Yeah, you can use the buttons as an HID device. You can raise and lower the volume on a media player or your computer. You can go back and forth between the open office, you know, slideshows. So you have to enter an application first and then plug in USB? Uh, no, that is actually part of the code itself. It is an SN that's an SVM. So it's enabled by default. So it's a disk and an SVM. And, uh, yeah. Well, it's not an all players. Yeah. It's, well, we can't uh, change USB behavior all the time. A lot of them can. Only the ones where we have our own USB stack for our Yes. Yeah. So Which would be like the um, sensor would be. Yeah. Like yeah. the portal yeah. player targets, yeah. and I think the gave you that as well. Yeah. Well, each uh, the Nano's a portal player, so we'll have it. But it's pretty new code, so it's 
might change for how exactly it works. Yeah. Why are you using it? Because uh, um, it is still a little bit buggy, and I was trying to do it before, and it kept on uh, going nuts. Like it kept on shooting through all the slides. <laughs> and I, I don't exactly want this thing to just like be like boom, 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 boom. Oh, we're done. <laughs> it might not be on. It might not report the button police. Yeah. So it might be on. <laughs> That's why it doesn't report the button release. At least when I tried it on uh, this one, anyway, it just shot through all the slides and. That would be an awfully short presentation. What would I be doing up here? I'd probably be doing some silly dance or something. <laughs> um, we have FM radio support on the targets that have the appropriate hardware. But uh, bear in mind that a couple of work in progress um, ports that do have FM radio on the hardware may not have it enabled quite yet. But most of the targets that we do have here already do have FM radio enabled in SPN. So it works perfectly, more or less. Um, there is recordings. Like FM radio, it's got to be with the right hardware. Not every target originally supports recording. Like, um, for an example, the iPod video, this does support recording, and there is a recording functionality. And as a matter of fact, this is an iPod video screenshot. So you can see it. But the FM radio is not part of it. The recording is done with the, uh, the, dock, the dock connector and a special accessory. I think we do support the accessory or no? It's sure. just light in things on the dock. So I think we do support it, right? I yeah. never tried it. Anyway. How do you get the screenshot? Oh, the screenshots. Actually, I took these from our manual and from the uh, SIM, from the user interface SIM. Which we'll probably get to later. Yeah, we're going to get to that later. Anyway, um, recording is extremely versatile, extremely flexible. Uh, customization is just amazing. You can customize um, what you want to encode it as, like you can um, save to a wave pad, wave, MP3, AIFF. You can set the frequency <coughs> of the codecs. Um, we have splitting. We actually have um, time splitting, pre-recording trigger, um, <coughs> AGC. Uh, any other any other features I should mention in the recording? But recording is extremely versatile on uh, targets that support it, like the H100, uh, for example. We have optical in and out, so <laughs> digital recording. Mm. They don't make them like that anymore. Yeah, <laughs> this is the one reason, actually, because of the uh, digital recording. These are in um, very high demand because people want them simply because of uh, Rockbox, of course. The recording is utterly amazing on these targets. With optical in and out, it's even better. Well, digital. Yeah, that's digital stiff, and also to the fact that you can replace a hard drive with these in the, with a compact flash card. You have a solid state, quiet hard um, hard drive, well, formerly hard drive base player. To record, you get no spin up sound. It's and the internal mic doesn't have that either. Yeah, the internal microphone actually even on this one is also good too. Which device is that you're talking about? Uh, this is the iRiver H100, and this is its. Um, Slightly more advanced cousin, the H300. Uh, the big difference between this one and this one is that this one is a grayscale target, while this one is a color. Um, the other big difference is that this one has optical in and out, while this one does not. But that does not mean that this is not a bad recorder either. In fact, I actually took this to a live show to record, and the sound quality was actually really, really good. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Move we'll right along! <laughs> Sorry, moving my screen saver. <laughs> 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 moving right along. Plugins. <laughs> Plugins, everyone. Games, apps, demos, there's everything in this. And it even plays Doom. Yay. Yes, Rockbox plays Doom. Even on the grayscale target, it plays Doom. It's like you just sit in the subway train waiting for, you know, waiting to get to your stop. You could be playing Doom on your iPod Mini if you wanted to. It's going to be black and white, it's going to be awkwardly cramped, but it plays. We even play Game Boy games with a rock with an um, emulator based on the new boy. We have cover flow. Iron Maiden. Yes. yes. <laughs> I know, we use Maiden. <laughs> Does the cover uh, flow work on my now? Uh, cover flow works on all supported targets, which um, basically is everything except for the Arcos player, I believe. Yeah, because it's a cartel screen. So all of these targets here will have picture flow. 
$50. Yeah, well, cover flow, as we call it. Um, cover flow, however, is um, it's not, it doesn't really work like the interface of the iPod Classic, where you can select the song and then it'll immediately uh, jump into the WPS and play it. Uh, cover flow is more of a demonstration. That you can just like look at all your album art and nice, you know, nice little uh, rotation. I don't know how to really describe it. You just basically get to see all your cover art. Yes. And you can select the cover and you can see the songs associated with that album. Um, we do have album art support with uh, JPEG and BitMap files, and we do have scaling, as a matter of fact, as well. So, you know, you can get a um, JPEG album art from wherever, uh, copy it into the same folder as where the album is, and when you play the album, and we name it to cover.jpg or cover.bitmap or folder.jpg, or I guess um, you can also rename it to like whatever the album is called to anything. What if well. it's embedded? File, so. um, it would not read embedded album art. We can only read an external file. So that means, like, uh, for example, if you go to like Amazon, say, like you buy, you know, you buy like an MP3 from an album, you can probably just, like download the album art while you're at it from that album, and then just put them into the same folder and run it in Rockbox, and you get your album art. But it will not read the embedded album art yet, and nobody's actually bothered working on that. And there's basically way too many to list. We have. Um, a whole ton of games. Uh, besides Doom and uh, Rock Boy, we also have um, a Tetris-like game. We have a Snake game, yeah. We have um, a whole, what else do we have? Uh, Frozen Bubble. Bubble. Yeah, Frozen Bubble. <laughs> Frozen Bubble Club, we have Sudoku, we have Solitaire. Yeah, Sudoku. Sudoku. Blackjack, we'll yes, see. we have Sudoku. Uh, we have a Sokoban as well. We also have uh, an Asteroids clone. We have Pac-Man. Yes, we have Pac-Man, but uh, Pac-Man is an emulator, and the thing about Pac-Man is you have to go get the ROMs for it yourself. And we basically will not touch getting the ROMs for you with 39 and a half of pull. But if you happen to have, you know. Yeah, if you happen to have it. I mean, if you happen to have the arcade board, you can just uh, dump the ROMs yourself and, you know, dump them into my box. <laughs> Rob, what's, what are the obstacles to integrating cover flow with playlist controls? Um, well, basically, uh, we have basic. Um, playback control with CoverFlow, you can actually select an album art and look at the songs and you can actually start playing them, but what it does not do is that it does not jump into the WPS immediately. It will just start playing, but it will remain in CoverFlow. So, yes? What's a WPS? Uh, WPS stands for while playing screen. It's basically the screen that you will see while your music is playing. It shows you, you know, like the progress bar sure. and your just album art. Just didn't know was. Yeah. But, um, that's why I said that CoverFlow is still kind of basic. Nobody's actually done work on getting it to jump to the WPS after selecting the song. So I assume that the iTunes cover art is the thing you're saying you don't have to support for? We do not. That's album. That well, album basically, is, you know, um, in the ID3 tag of like an M3, for example, you can embed the album art into that. Um, it can be quite wasteful, especially like if you download an entire album, you only need one picture right, right, sure. yeah. instead of one picture each single file. But yeah. it's just another way of storing album art. Yeah, I, I know that some artists actually take advantage of that, like um, Nine Inch Nails, when they released the slip, every single track had its own album art that would display as you played it. But well, since we don't have any kind of support for that, then that all went to waste. Yeah. So, they should have Nine Inch Nails music. Oh, well, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Installing Rockbox, it's easy, dead easy. Um, you can use our tool, Rockbox Utility. Installation of Rockbox is a breeze. You basically can, um, all you do is you change the, uh, the path to whatever your, you know, whatever your device is hooked up to, like whatever drive lever it's assigned. And then you can just say complete installation and it will install the boot loader and it will for you. You can do a small installation, which will just install the current build of Rockbox. Yeah, new um, just select your player, it's path and install. That's all it really is. That's all it really is to it. Um, the Rockbox utility can also install a few extras for you. Like you can download um, the base uh, file you need to play Doom. Um, we need, yeah, we need a rockdoom.wad file which goes into um, the Rockbox <coughs> itself on the player. So you can download that with here. You can also download the fonts and some additional themes, and you can also. Uh, create a voice file. You can download the basic voice file to you know speak the menus for you. You can download the manual and you can also install Rockbox as well. This is basically like the all in one you know utility you need to just um, handle all your Rockbox needs. You know, you're not you, you don't feel like doing it the manual way. That's 
is much easier. Um, development process. We're going to go through this a little bit more, but uh, Rockbox is primarily written in the C programming language, and assembly is used for certain machine and performance specific functions. As um, we have four different uh, architectures that we support, which are SH1 on the Arcos, the old Arcos players, uh, Cold Fire. Uh, most of our targets are ARM, and like I said earlier, the ONDA is based on a MIPS CPU. So we have assembly for each um, each CPU in the code, you know, in our um, target tree, in our code tree. Sorry. Um, assembly languages, yeah, SH. Cold Fire, ARM, and MIPS. But the primary work is all done in C. Uh, this is mostly to get like um, certain little uh, functions that require a little bit more speed out. Um, we use Subversion for our version control handling. Although I think there was talk about um, switching to Git at one point as well. Uh, yeah, and some people have set up for Git. Yeah, I, I know a couple of developers have actually done that. Like um, the guys who were doing all the AMS work did a Git mirror. Um, we always try to keep our target tree as clean as possible to facilitate the easier additions of new targets, which is, um, how, do, how do I put it? All right. Our target tree would basically be like um, firmware, target, and then we have like SH1, cold fire, ARM. Yes? So I assume you're using GCC. Yes, we use yes. GCC. Uh, do okay. the GCC backends for these processors, do they suck in any way? Um, no. Well, you have to use a specific version to yeah. by us. Uh, Otherwise, yeah, we have, can be bugs yeah. and yeah, probably not compile. The I, I don't have it here, but setting up a Rockbox build environment <laughs> basically means um, you check out our code with SVN. On Linux, most Linuxes, you should already have the development tools installed first. And then you go, you run a script in um, our target and our SVN folder. <laughs> and it'll ask you uh, what targets you want to set up for. And you can get your choice of SH, Cold Fire, ARM, and MIPS, or you can just do all of them if you want to just, you know, don't really care. Yeah. Or you want to create a build server. Um, just uh, let it run. After a while, it'll build up. It'll tell you to install um, a few folders into your path. And once you do that, you can start running, you can start building Rockbox for yourself. And I guess I could probably just run one really quickly later on, and I'll show you how the development process works. At least how the build process works. But um, as I was saying about a target tree, we try to keep it as clean as possible. So basically, we have it like um, we have like the target set up that we split it down by CPU, and then like more specific each CPU. Now, is it inline ASM or are there large portions of it that are like assembly only? Like it's it varies. It varies. The primary, like yeah. I can tell you guys right now that. Behind you see Linux that this is a .NMMU like Goldfire are working to get their tool chains mm -hmm. as close to whatever you have resting on building Linux, mm -hmm. but in most cases there's several versions behind. Yeah. And they're well aware of the same way. And they're well aware of that. So what is your problem is that in the case of Goldfire processor design on it. It's moving slower than New York City traffic. <laughs> and what what is the blessed version that you see? Um, it's all on our wiki, but like you said, the easiest way is uh, basically you check out and run a script called Rockbox .sh, and that mm -hmm. will just automatically build and receive and download and all of the uh, exact compiler versions. Yeah. It's extremely simple. Because I, I know that most of the tools we have, we have a patch specifically for us, and. I mean, it won't break anything else because um, most of our tools will still happily build with whatever else. Are and you, no. Are you talking to the GCC people to try to get your opinion? I don't know. Um, I'm not aware of that. Um, I think there may have been some initial communication. I know one of our developers has put some patches in, uh, to GCC, but other than that, I can't tell you that would be a pain when you have Well, especially since we're using quite old versions on some architectures that can yeah. be a bit tricky. Yeah, I think, we're, I think the, we're still using like a 2.6 on one of them, I think. Especially the um, cold fire. Uh, no, no. 3.6. 3.6. Yeah, that's, yeah, no, that's a little bit too old. I, I was just realized that is too old. Yeah. It's the 68K one, yeah, that we do have to keep an older version around because otherwise it just bitches and won't do a thing. So, like I said, um, 
Develop, uh, building a rock box uh, build or sim is actually quite easy. Um, you could just uh, create a uh, folder in target, you know, in the code tree. Say like um, you want to build for the iPod video, you can say like make um, an iPod video folder. Um, go into that, and then you run a um, you run a configure file, which is in you know one, one another folder. And I'll show it to you in a moment. And I think we should probably get to that. Let's demonstrate. <laughs> We should probably get to the demonstration. Oh yeah, I'll get, I'll get to that. <laughs> the, the VMware image is available. Um, we do have our VMware image that we use. Yeah, this is actually a... Uh... And we do have SIGWIN packages as well yeah. if you want to go for that reason or some other reason. But usually VMs are a lot quicker, so... Sorry, I have to uh, raise the resolution of this a little bit. Thanks. Oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was not that good. Yeah, no, that was not good. It's not exactly what I wanted. Hold on one second, please. comes up, you get this large menu, and we have it sorted out by manufacturer and then by model. So for example, um, 22. 22, that's what we're going to build. Alright, we'll select 22, we're going to select um, 32 megabytes for the default, which is um, most uh, the 30 gigabyte iPod video. This is uh, the RAM size, um, 60 and 8 gigabyte iPod videos actually have 60 four megabytes, so if you have one of those, you would put 64 where I put 32. And we are going to build a normal build. Why are you telling me that my... <laughs> I hate this. Everything doesn't want to work. Did you add to your path? Yes, I did add it to my path. I know I did. <laughs> it's not there. It's not there. <laughs> <laughs> I know I, I, I put this in here before. No, I'm not going to load it directly from source. I'm not going to power this back on. Yeah. I, think, I just had to um, shut it off before I try to save the stupid um, settings. What is 
It's an Ubuntu that was um, built with the uh, Asus Triple E stuff directly in mind. It's got the array kernel on it. But we're going off topic here, and we don't like off topic sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, how is this related to iPod Linux? Um, iPod um, Linux, well, I guess Cloud Watson. All right. So basically, there, of course, as you probably know, there are two main open source projects that can run on a lot of the iPod uh, targets. There's iPod Linux and there's Rockbox. Um, generally, iPod Linux was first on a lot of the iPods. Um, we have used some of their code. <laughs> um, so basically, we've used some of their code, um, ported some of their drivers, and that's basically it. Um, usually, the two targets definitely have a different goal in mind. Um, I would say the iPod Linux uh, group more has fun stuff you can do with your iPod. And while we try to maintain to be you know, the best DAP firmware we can yeah. with audio in, uh, as our primary focus. So. Too small. Yeah, no. <laughs> you can't really see it too well? No. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Well, This one actually is working, so I'm going to show you what it looks like. And make. That's all it is. Four point zero point three. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, uh, we. It okay. used to be older, but it's the okay. ARM LLD. That's what I was thinking of the two sixteen. Um, although with ARM, we do use a patch for thumb code. Yeah. And like I said, you, is it inline ASM or there are All right. I think you know what we're going to go and uh, cut to the chase over here. Yeah, most of it. But... Let's run Rockbox. Yeah. All right, I think we can probably see. Um, yes. All right, we have a database functionality, which um. You had to see the explain one part. Yeah. Did I make it. All right. Well, I can't really make it. Um, the basic function. <laughs> the basic functionality. Um, the file view. Just basically shows you that everything that's in your file system, like for example, I have a music folder over here. And you can see all the music that I have on it. Um, our settings folder, you can show up uh, the one oh the one thing I think people will like to see, the equalizer. Yeah. We have a graphical equalizer. You can, yeah. Five pen equalizer. And one thing I can't do about this thing though is I can't go backwards. No, I don't have a number. What do I? I don't have a number. I have a caps lock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a useful function there, huh? <laughs> so basically, our sim is written with num lock in mind. That's what you see those little numbers for. Mm -hmm. Is so you can use the num lock to control. Yeah. Basically, instead of pressing the buttons, you press num lock keys. Yeah, because basically it's meant for the the touchpad in mind, the keypad on the sides, which I don't have. So I don't know how the hell I'm gonna get the hell out of these. Okay. Can't you use the number on the keyboard? I got out of it. We have an advanced low shelf filter, uh, three levels of heat filter, a high shelf filter. Um, it's basically just a uh, monitor that sounds the same way. It's, just, yeah. it's part of being a parametric equalizer versus just yeah. yeah, we have a uh, band gain as well. And we also have a few green sets as well. Uh, Which are presets. mostly useless, but people want them. <laughs> yeah, we want our presets. We also have uh, crossfeed. We have direct feed, crossfeed. Are you supporting the, the newer thing where it doesn't get falls between the tracks. We have gapless. Uh, we, yeah, we've had gapless for quite a while, actually. Yeah. Yeah. We've had gapless well before a lot of um, factory firmwares had gapless. I think the iPod Classic was the first one that did true gapless. Yeah. And it's kind of funny because if you look at like the slash dot stories or anything like that, it's already written in Rockbox or something yeah. like that. Well, I think that was like one of the times it was Rockbox or right. something like that. I think we, we should probably get to uh, what people want to see. Let's play some music. And that's a, that is the WPS of Rockbox. The default one. Yes, this is the default one, but a lot of people actually quite like it. We made it's it as appealing uh, as possible. Rockbox theme. Oh yeah, it's the of the board. Um, I think we can probably show some of the ones on the Rockbox utility, right? Uh, I would just go to the Rockbox utility. Alright, no problem. 
easier to see. Alright, I think it's probably to that from here. I'm sorry? Uh, the simulator is actually based off of SDL, so it's that's why we, it's mainly a simulator and not an interface. Yeah. So the simulator is basically to show you what the user interface is going to look like. It's used a lot for like theme authors use it a lot um, for debuting certain things that don't have, or testing certain things that don't depend on the hardware. Mm -hmm. On the iRiver like, H10, did you guys do anything for the remote display that was on that cable? That? Uh, we do support remotes. Um, if you run the sim, you'll also have two displays popping up. So, yeah. But yeah, we do support our remotes I on think, most I think devices. we should probably uh, show it off really quickly. We can actually make a um, sim. Uh, make that H300 sim. As that even has a color remote. Huh. <laughs> Well, I know, I, I misspelled it, so... Yeah, I know. I hate the tap key on this damn thing sometimes. Everybody shut up, because I have a Mac. <laughs> anyway, I'll show, let's go to um, themes.rockbox.org. theme site and we have it split up according to um, screen resolution size and you can see like some targets like uh, the Arcos um, FM recorder, Omnio, recorder V1 and V2 all share the same themes because they all have the same style, uh, same uh, screen resolution and um, call it that. But anyway, let's go. Um, yeah. And basically any user can upload their themes that they create uh, to the site. And you can see some of the examples of things that people have done. Yeah. Pen and paper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually like pen and paper. Looks cute. Mm -hmm. That's cute. Yeah, genius. <laughs> so. We've got a Christmas theme. <laughs> I actually took that one time for Christmas. I think a few of them, if you scroll over them, you can actually yeah. see what the menus look like as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, just wait, there we go. Aww. Isn't that cute? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fine. You know, a theme, you know, you can customize the WPS, you can customize the background, you can mm -hmm. customize even the icon sets and that sort of thing. So, too much information. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's, um, it's quite easy to write a theme because um, you create a text file which um, you basically put like the values you want and then you just, um, you know, put the appropriate art in, and mm -hmm. hopefully it all looks good. We just have our own markup code that's all detailed in the manual or the wiki or something like that. I'm actually using this one myself <laughs> over here. Oh, that's Nerd sketch. Oh, that's even better. Mm -hmm. ah. Okay. Um, is this uh, running still? Okay. I'm waiting for this to show. I guess you can probably show us a few other things that we have. Some more examples of um, things. Grayscale? Grayscale things? Yeah, let's go look at um, some grayscale. Some people have done. Is the iRiver H1 on your device still around? Or is it uh, none of these targets still? are actually on the market, to be honest. But they're still around on eBay. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes um, some small uh, merchant will put them up for sale briefly. Mm -hmm. Because of this, their a shop who's been selling, who's been recycling used everything. Used mm -hmm. everything? Uh, I had a meeting by disk drive sitting in one of my computers that I bought from them. The young thing was wearing an NPFS file system like that. It was so it would be used to clean someone else's stuff off of it. And one of the bloody good things I had my computer on was Linux. Yeah. Um, yes. Have you gotten any um, feedback from any of the device makers yourself? Well, Actually, we did get a little bit of support from Sandisk themselves because um, I think they were one of the few uh, manufacturers that actually showed interest in pointing Rockbox to 
the uh, Sansa E200 when that was still a relatively new target for them. Right. Kind of. There's catches to that. Um, there's, I think there's a page that we detail what happened. Basically what happened is we were approached by um, what we believe was probably like a marketing PR person. And they said, you know, we'd be interested in helping you out uh, with Port Rockbox. And at the time we were like, cool, this is awesome. It's about time someone did this. And, um, and well, eventually we got a few devices from them and we got a development board. And then we asked them for some data sheets and any other help, and our contact pretty much just fizzled out. So basically, they gave us a couple free devices, and that was it. Yeah, I think we have the. Uh, the yeah, the, here. right there. There it is. Oh. Which pretty much says yeah. what I was saying. Yeah. And this was all over Slashdot at the time, and I could say some other stuff, but. Do you guys have like a. <laughs> A hierarchy of like friendly manufacturers to least friendly, just generally. Um, you know, it all depends. Um, I mean, example for this device that uh, we were being, it was being ported to the E two hundred series. Um, basically, it had been working for quite a while, um, except for because basically it used uh, very similar mm -hmm. hardware to some of our other devices, the portal player. Like, yeah, like um, the iPads are all portal players. But the biggest issue was with that port is we didn't have sound. Um, so it actually used a uh, chip by Austrian Microsystems, and at the time we actually um, we it was a number of months that we just didn't have sound on this device, and we were going, well, crap. And eventually we actually um, some members were given a tour to AMS's facility, and we were granted um, a basically the data sheet to that chip um, under an NDA, but. Uh, with, you know, ability to write code on it, open source code on that, and other things. And we've also gotten another data sheet from AMS for another chip um, without an NDA, but, you know, we respect their privacy and that sort of thing. Um, but, of course, I mean, most friendly you can get is uh, companies like Freescale, who most of their data sheets are just publicly available, which yeah. is great. But and that, that, that actually made it easy to port to the GDBS, mm -hmm. for the most part. And what was also fun, really funny, was um, finding out that the uh, the USB um, hardware on this, I believe, what was the, the connection to the USB hardware on this? I think it made it easier for a few of the other targets. I think the, it made it easier to get USB on the portal players, I believe, right? Right. Because they had yes. the same registers. It was similar to the IMX. They got their USB controller from the same other company. So basically, so we once we found that out, it was really easy to drop USB onto the portal player targets. IMX. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, that, that's a continuation of Austin's story over here. <laughs> what we did not get, yes. We got two players, but no info, no docs, no help at all. It's like you <laughs> got a couple of players on us. Yeah, Which like might lead some to believe that it was some sort of marketing amongst people, but I'm not going to say anything about that. Yeah. <laughs> For all we know, only, only, only one man. Uh, yeah, most of these devices we reverse engineer due to, because of course, I mean, these aren't meant to be hacked in this way. And, uh, I mean, a lot of these chips are just completely undocumented. And I mean, I, there have been a number of nights where I've sat through going through one register, incrementing a bit, compiling, checking the device. Okay, incrementing one more bit on that register. And just <laughs> Eventually we got to places, but yeah, most of this work was some reverse engineering. Yes. Um, two quick things. I just did you ever try to tackle um, my favorite DAP was the Real Karma? Oh, uh, we actually um, I did try to do it. I did have a Real Karma, but unfortunately it died. Uh, the battery just uh, kind of swelled and uh, squished everything inside of it. But we then, were actually trying to do a porting effort for the Real Karma. We actually did a, co a couple of interested people were looking to help out with that. Um, the Real Karma uses um, a firmware that's based on ECOS, and we've been trying to go mad. We were tearing our hair out, trying to ask around to see if we could get the source differences that Real had made for the ECOS um, source code, but it turns out that nobody could get the patches. But they closed up? Um, well, since they closed down, but I guess they were not at liberty to really give those out. ECOS itself is open source, but I guess the patches were really not meant to be. And then. Oh, just my second thing was, um, you know, as, as DAPs transitions like now into like PMPs and mm -hmm. smartphones, I saw, you know, once you compile that, that app actually runs in user space. So mm -hmm. has there been any um, 
efforts to run like on PMPs or, or smartphones in user space as a as a just as, as an app. Yeah, yeah well, app, we yeah. Um, we have been looking into the possibility of making a um, as an app for certain devices like the um, the Android devices, oh, yeah. um, the iPhone and the iPod <laughs> Touch, which are impractical in the sense of replacing the entire firmware, especially on the iPhone and iPod Touch. So right. essentially, we can already um, run it on most things that run SDL and have a POSIX compatible. Which is uh, assembly, thing. essentially. But is the main thing is, is people don't want to run the SIM; they want to run Rockbox. Which the SIM is a little bit different than Rockbox. Um, you know, for example, it doesn't use uh, our own codecs. Um, there's a couple other things with the SIM. But um, also, one thing I kind of wanted to touch on with your previous question: um, one thing, important thing to know about ports is we as a group don't really do any ports. Um, basically, ports are done by people that come forward with uh, four main things. The device itself, the motivation to do it, the capability to do it, and the time to do it. Yeah. And generally, they coalesce other people who are interested in the same goal. And eventually, maybe some uh, mainstream Rockbox developer wants to get the device and start coding. Um, and basically, they just drum up the interest. Um, but it generally requires at least one person or one group to start that port. That, that's basically what happened here with the second gen nano. Um, we had the uh, Linux for nano group, like I mentioned earlier, um, when they finally managed to, um, decrypt, they actually finally managed to dump the boot ROM. Through an exploit in the notes. Yeah, through the, yeah. a notes exploit, ah. yes. That's, it took a certain notes HTM file that you just put in the notes folder on the iPod, it would crash it um, with a buffer overflow, and from there you can actually inject your own custom code onto it. And, with that, we were actually able to get a bootloader, which we can get the Rockbox loaded to display, but it doesn't get much further than that. Yeah, and basically yeah. the main issue we had with that was, unlike the previous iPods and other and other devices, they encrypted both the bootloader and the firmware. Yeah. So. And uh, not to mention the fact that this was a totally different architecture from the other iPods because. Which we're those, now working through. Yeah, those are portal player based, while this one is based on the Samsung chip. And now, we're getting there, somewhat, slowly. But we're hitting them. But anyway, here's another sim that shows off the um, the iRiver H300. You can see the remote underneath. So as I scroll, you can see that it'll show you what the uh, remote displays as well. So this is also really useful so that you know you can see the uh, WPS on the remote as well. Um, so I'll try a little something different. Yeah, do a little something different. Oh, and I can also show you Albemarle too. And you see the WPS on the remote as well. So how cool is that? So I guess that's enough for that for now. Oh, actually it does. Oh, it does. Thanks. What just happened? I just turned off the music. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so I, I saw a USB icon. Oh, that's um the simulator, like I said, since it's only a simulator and not the real rock box, this is just to test out like what the user interface is gonna look like. Uh, like this, you'll see when you connect your device to USB. Take that off. And I guess I'll probably show up a couple of other things too. Um, no, I probably show a couple of games on. What's that for? I noticed the somebody stopped enjoying itself. Yep. Yeah. Oh yes, so bases. Bubbles is my favorite, so basically. Uh, although I don't know how to fire in this damn thing. Uh up a barrel fire or something. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> what about Doom? Doom? Oh, I don't have the Doom mod right now. And I can't really set it up. <laughs> yeah, it's better to show it off on a real device if we can actually get a real device displayed on the projector somehow. But that's basically it. <laughs> and some of them you can control playback from the menu or positive being. Sokoban. Yeah, but not with you. Yeah. These are brand new levels. <laughs> That's not the same. Uh, I'm not sure on Sokoban. 
I think you can um, customize your own levels. It's just oh, yeah. a text file that you laid out. I think it is, yeah. Um, I know um, Snake is another one. You can actually uh, write your own levels with a simple plain text file. Right, Chris. Alright, so I don't okay look my chest is not very good, but it's just basically show off how it works. Um this was based off the canoe chest, I believe, right? Maybe Yeah, I think so as well. Now, I have the doom here, but I don't have the water or anything, so I'm having a ton to do it right now. But that gives you a basic idea of um, all the stuff that Rockbox, like many of the things that Rockbox offers, and like I said. <laughs> that's a, a recording screen. And then she gets you, uh, <coughs> are uh, any of the players uh, have like, Wi-Fi on them or anything like that? Uh, no, no players have uh, Wi-Fi currently on them. Um, I believe though that um, I, know, well, I know the real Karma did have Ethernet on it, not Wi-Fi, but a few of the um, more well, modern. Technically, PMPs. there's a serial port. So. Yeah. And I know some more modern PMPs well, do have. Well, yeah. What about the? I think you can have a USB Ethernet device. Yeah. Uh, well, keep in mind we would also have to write the raw stacks for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it was already a pain to get the USB stack going. The well. USB stack had been like uh, two years or so that we didn't even get anything working until now. We got it actually mostly working. Oh, uh, yes. Let's do a live install. Void the warranty. Yes. So here, we are going to do a live install of Rockbox. New out of the box device. Which device is that? This is the Olympus M Rob 100. Show it off really quickly. Show off the virginity. Yay! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Make sure it works before you get warranty. I'll find out right now. <laughs> um, actually, there was some notices like uh, oh, uh, kind of people were re or returning stuff to Apple and all that. And, you know, of course it depends on which sort of representative you get. But uh, that was the representative that a lot of people got from Apple didn't mind it at all. Because actually, on the Apple iPods, um, Rockbox doesn't touch anything. It just basically uh, modifies the hard drive <laughs> info itself. So basically, we just modify something on a hidden condition and then load uh, the firmware onto another, uh, the main condition. And it's a, it's a dual boot, right? You can always go back and like yep. for tech support or whatever, you can go back to the original firmware. Yep. But basically, it's the same as just like putting an MP3 file on your device. Same business. So there's no chance of you know ruining a flash or. So what type of chance does that from including the USB network? Yeah. 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 Yeah